um, a cool place. It is known everywhere as Science Alive. Uh, it's very nice for me to have a chance to spend my day here at Marine City Middle. We get to come up pretty much every year. So I was here last year and the year before, going back quite some time. And I know a bunch of you from Bell River. How many of you go to Bell? You went to Bell River, so yeah, recognize a few faces that way. So cool to come back and see it as sixth graders. However, just in case we have some students here that don't know science life, maybe you went to another school besides Bell River, or maybe you were absent last time we came out, and you're sort of kind of wondering, well, what is science alive? What are we going to look at and talk about? What's what's it all about? Well, we always come in, we do a little explaining. That way, no matter what, everybody knows precisely what is going on. Well, first of all. At Science Alive, where I come from, we are scientists, of course. We are teachers also. We are a lot like zookeepers. So we're all these things together. And every day, our little, little band of scientists, we get up in the morning super early. We go right to work at, a, at our, our big animal place. And there we've got all these fantastic creatures, all these animals from around the world. And we're actually all animal scientists. So we go to our place, and being scientists, we watch animals, and we ask a million questions about them. Uh, we are always trying every day to expand our knowledge about the animal kingdom, learn more about them. But some of the animals that we have, we like them so much. They're cool, they're beautiful, they're friendly. We know kids would like them as much as we do, so we share them. We, we select a little handful each day to share. We get those animals that we want to share out of their habitats where they live. We get them into these comfortable little travel units. We, we, we pack lunches and water bottles and snacks and eaters and toys and blankets and whatever each animal needs we, we get and then off we go to share them. And today, get to share them with all of you. And the reason that I know Science Alive is so much fun, when I get the animals out and, and over here, we get a chance to touch and to hold and to see all of them up close, eyeball to eyeball, probably nose to nose. And when you get up close like that, it, you find out quickly it is the best and it's the most fun way to learn about it. I mean, today, I have got an animal that you can hold in your hands. I have got one or two that might walk around on the floor. One might walk into your lap and curl up and want to nap with you. Uh, it will snuggle. Uh, I've got some that maybe I will hold, you can pet. Uh, I've got one that will slither across your laps. And when you get that close up, there's one thing for sure that you get to do now. You might decide today that you don't want to touch, and that is perfectly cool. You know, if I bring an animal out and you look and, and, and you choose not to touch, we'll never make somebody ever touch. We always like to let you decide. But I know one thing. I can make one solid prediction here. I say today that even if you don't touch any, you still get a great look. I know you're going to get a great look because I'm going to spend this entire class period pretty much crawling around on the floor. I will crawl right to you until you are the closest person to every animal. I'm talking this close. And you get this close to something, guys, and you look really carefully. You always find out more. Um, it works every time you try it. You know, you're far away, you, you, everything fades out. You get close and you see detail, and that's what we get to do today. Don't have to touch, but uh, a sweet look, that I can promise. Now, here are the rules. Number one, we have to be really quiet and peaceful. You know, I've got this one, that, that little one that might crawl in your lap. So that, she's a baby. She's uh, 11 months old. She looks like a baby. She acts like a baby. We treat her like a baby. And babies like peace and quiet, so let's make peace and quiet prevail here. If you think of a question, hand goes up. I'll be like every teacher on the planet. I will call on you. I like how, as they say in kindergarten, crisscross applesauce. If your legs are all nice and neatly folded, I can get the animals right to you. If your legs are sticking out, that's an obstacle for me to go around. And, and again, guys, if I have to go around your legs, you get too far away, you miss something. So you're going to see more if your legs are folded. And one last thing, I am a scientist called... Uh, you guys are sixth graders and some seventh and eighth graders in here too. Mm -hmm. um, somebody can, I'm sure, raise their hand and tell me what is the science of biology? What is that all about? Right here. Learn about life. Say that again. Learn about animals and life. Yeah, when you said life, that's the home run. You know what, as a biologist, we get to study anything that is living, anything that has a life, any form of animal life, plant life, 
fungal life like mushrooms and mold, microscopic life like bacteria. We can study how food chain works. We can study muscles and bones. We can study a fossil from a prehistoric life form. We can classify vertebrates and invertebrates. What I like about the science of biology, guys, it, it allows the, the scientists to study anything, anything that has to do with something living. A cell, a gene, a DNA, anything living. And I would like all of us today uh, to observe my living things as biologists. I've got living things today from pretty much uh, all around the world, different habitats at least. I, this little guy is from the Andes Mountains of South America. I've got an animal today from the southeastern region of the U.S. I've got an animal from the, the canopy of South American rainforest. Let me get this little guy out. He's a baby. He's not the baby I was telling you about earlier, but he is a little kid. It is a chimney. He is soft. He is fluffy. He is fuzzy. He is ridiculously cute. Uh, is this something that a biologist would study? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it, is, is it a life form? Yeah. An organism? Absolutely. I'm going to say this is perfect. Uh, his name is Baby Charlie. And I'm thinking here that somebody will be able to raise their hand and tell me well, what kind of an animal is Baby Charlie right here. Is this a chinchilla? Yeah, this little fuzzball sitting on my hand. He is about a seven-month-old baby chinchilla. And I think I know why everybody likes them. It's not just the cuteness factor. It's not only that he can be all lovable. Doesn't he look rather lovable? Mm -hmm. He is, trust me. But I think the reason people like him, they are considered to be the world's softest mammal. And of course, you guys know what a mammal is, right? Mm -hmm. Virtually any animal with bones and hair. Bones and hair equal mammal as much as two plus two equaling four. And of all the mammals known to biology, softness is a chinchilla. And I'm going to let you guys cut him. And if you decide to pet this little one, you will walk out of here uh, and know for sure what the softest animal feels like. Now, I'm going to hold him. The reason, he was born at Science Alive. I've known him since day one. I happened to be working the evening that he was born. And, you know, he knows me. I know him. And, you know, in his little brain, he probably thinks I'm like his big brother. And in nature, chinchillas live in a big group, sometimes a hundred of them all together. His brain is kind of hardwired like a computer to want to be close to something that knows. And that would be me in this case. So I will do the holding. But when I come by, I say feel the fur on his back. I say feel also the fur on the tail. Analyze it, compare it, find out where the softest fur is. You can't pet his face and he would never bite you. We don't have any animals that bite. There'll be zero biting. You're not going to bite the animals. They're not going to bite you. But nobody wants fingers, you know, hovering around their face. So respecting an animal is part of biology in my book. So from behind is the way to go. And our chinchillas, they always like to begin on the left side. So you're going to be the first kid. My next animal, and you're going to be the first one. Is that okay? Is that a deal? Awesome. I'm going to go right here. What is your name? Lucas. Lucas? You want to be the first one? You found him, Lucas? Is that how I do? Just right on his back. Perfect. Man oh. feels tail too, Lucas. Feels back again. Feels tail again. You look very serious, Lucas. Feels back one more time, Lucas. Which is the softest, the back of the tail? Yeah, it's very fuzzy. Which is the softest, do you think? Yes. Here or here? Here. Can I call you Lucas the biologist? What's your name? Everybody say Lucas the Biologist. Lucas the Biologist. Sounds very official. I like it. Lucas the Biologist. And Lucas the Biologist, he did a very simple and thorough experiment. He pet both regions of this chinchilla. Uh, he used his sense of touch, and he determines that the back is softer than the tail. And I concur. I agree. I say the back is the softest. You can try him, too. Look at him staring at you. <laughs> he says, look into my eyes. <laughs> and you know what? He's not going to run away. You know, in fact, he's focusing his attention on you, and the last thing on his mind is danger. You know, he was born at Science Alive less than a year ago, but he's already been around enough people in classrooms and schools and kids to know that there's no danger. Now, if I went out somehow and I caught a wild chinchilla, which I wouldn't do, but for the sake of the argument, say I did, and I brought him to school, a wild chinchilla would be afraid of everything. Be afraid of a smart one. It will be afraid of a chair. It will be afraid of a sunkiss judge. Yeah, well, because it's all unknown. This little guy, he, he we've got water bottles like that sunkiss <laughs> bottle at Science Alive. You know, uh, he's been around a ton of smart ones. Uh, he says there's no danger. A wild chinchilla, everything new would be would be you know scary. You're too busy looking at you. Look really <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. He wants to be and you can't beat him at a stare down for some oddball reason that I, I do not know the answer to. Chinchillas don't seem to blink very often. 
which is odd to me because one reason that we blink all the time, thousands of times a day, is it moistens and cleans our eyes. And, and this guy actually lives in a desert where the air is bone dry. So you would think that blinking the eye would be a nonstop thing to keep the eye moist, but yet that's not what happens. And I, I've never read any data that would explain why they don't, don't blink that often. Maybe some biologist knows somewhere, but I've never seen what, I've never read the reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you just watch him. It's like he's got like little marbles for eyeballs that don't blink. But yeah, he does blink, but just not that frequently. Yeah, you know, he's got a great coat. You know, as I mentioned in one or two of the classes today, all chinchillas are softer than other mammals, but there's degrees of softness within chinchillas. And this guy, he, his coat is exceptional. You know, I, he's, he's probably tied for being the softest chinchilla that we have. We've got another one, his name is Puff. And Puff is a soft one too, but between Puff and Charlie, hard, hard to top them. Now question guys, why does he have all this glowing fur? You know, what's the purpose? I mean, he's not just growing it for the sake of growing. Why is he, why is he growing this? Right here. Maybe camouflage? What is camouflage? When you blend in with your surroundings. Yeah, you know, the color of his fur, guys, it, it's a very good match for his environment. You know, his homeland is, is the mountains of South America. He climbs in rock piles and in cliffs. And he's a very good uh, match. But, you know, his fur wouldn't have to be this thick. He could still be camouflaged and have thin fur. So why is it so thick and fluffy? Um, yes, it's got good camouflage. You were right. But why so thick right here? Uh, because over the night, um, maybe it gets really cold. Yeah, and, and even in the day. You know what, guys? His, his, his habitat, his part of the world... The climate is cold. You know, his, his homeland is southern South America, like the country of Chile, Argentina, a little bit of Peru. And where he comes from, it's cold year-round. You know, it, it's colder in the winter than in the summer, but nevertheless, it's going to be cold no matter what. Well, his fur that he grows is actually thicker than a polar bear's fur. So this little guy can go bee bobbing around in the Andes Mountains. And I've been in the Andes Mountains twice in my life, and I'll probably go again. And uh, it's cold. You know, I can speak from experience. This little guy has got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hairs covering his body, forming like a blanket, and it keeps the cold air in, uh, keeps the cold air out, rather. It keeps the warmth that his body creates in, and it's an insulator. It keeps him warm. You guys know what an adaptation is, right? Mm -hmm. Can somebody raise their hand and give me a, a, just a quick explanation? What is a, an adaptation right here? Um, living in the environment... Well, can, can you give me an example of an adaptation that he has? Um, he this has fur, a, this fur. Um, he has more than um, like a thousand furs on him that it keeps him nice and warm. Do you think he needs this fur to survive? Yeah, you know what, guys? Here's what I call an adaptation. Here's how I define it. An adaptation is anything that any living thing does, some feature, some body part, some behavior that makes it a better survivor. You know, chinchillas are able to survive in the cold because of an adaptation thick fur. You know what's interesting? His little region of the world down at the o in the ocean at the base of the Andes Mountains on the west coast, uh, they're penguins, and they've got thick feathers, and they live right next door. Um, if you go into the ocean, you might, you might find a sea lion. And, and they've got thick blubber. So all these animals living together in the same region, they all have some adaptation to keep their bodies warm. Thick blubber on the sea lions, thick feathers on the penguins, thick fur on the chinchillas. Now he's finally coming to life here. Let's just take a picture of my beautiful face. <laughs> he's very photogenic. He really gets like right in there. And notice he's focusing all his attention on you. He's not turning around to look at me. He sees me every day. He says, I know that guy. I know his voice. I know his smell. I know his face. He says, I I'm going to check out something that I don't know, and that would be you guys. And, you know, they don't make good pets. Don't everybody go tearing home saying, Mom and Dad, I saw the world's softest mammal. I want one for my birthday. <laughs> they take so I was at a school yesterday, and we had two chinchillas that we rescued. Uh, one is named Cupcake, and the other one is named Twinkie. And they're about a year old. 
They're a little bit older than this guy, but a, a family bought them. They spent a lot of money because they're unusual colors. They're kind of this creamy, buffy color. They bought them as little babies, and they had them for only a few months, and they said, we don't want them anymore. Too much work, too much hassle. They weren't very you know, calm. They wouldn't sit still. And Science Alive ended up adopting them, taking them in, and, and now we take them to school. But they, those guys are sweet, but they're so much work. Don't think they make the greatest pets just because they're cute and soft. That good stuff. When we say softest mammal, guys, it's true. And last count, we are somewhere around 5,417 kinds of mammals on planet Earth. And of the 5,417 species of mammal, we got the softest going right here. Oh, and you know what he's related to? A guinea pig. You know, if you look at him, he's kind of got a guinea pig look going. It's the shape of his snout, that kind of squared off muzzle. Stuff. If you guys think he's a soft, just give him a thumbs up. Now, why does he something kind of cute? Right now, he's thinking he's the star of the show. All eyes are on him. He's hanging out with me. He's getting all this attention. If he were scared, if you wanted to bolt and hide, this, this box would be a good hiding spot. And he would disappear into it like a mouse going down a hole. But I know this little guy, and I know how he likes to be the center of attention. He never goes to hide. Watch. If I give him a chance to go in, what will he do? <laughs> it's not even getting off my hand, look. Pops his head back out. He's ready for round two. That I always say, if he had his way, I would devise like an hour-long chinchilla show. And I would just keep going around our circle and tell you about chinchillas. I think he'd get into that. Don't go too far, get in there. Get in there. <laughs> It's like Get more adventurous as the day goes. Pardon me? Get more adventurous as the day Yeah, well, goes. he's been out now. This is his fifth time. And then I had him out to play with him during my lunch. I sat around in here for a little while with the animals. So he's had some fun. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's, he, he likes this place. All right, Vice Meister. I've got other animals to share. But a very cool, soft animal built for the cold, rugged Andes Mountains. You know, my next animal couldn't spend five minutes there and survive. This next animal that I'm going to bring out is from a totally different type of habitat, totally different environment. It has its own set of adaptations. And it also happens to be one of the animals that, as a biologist, I study. Well, you know what? Anybody that knows science a lot, everybody that knows this knows that we very often do have small snakes in boxes like this, but also sometimes turtles. Sometimes frogs and toads, sometimes lizards. You gotta wait and see. This ant, this is a species that I actually study in the wilds of southern Florida every summer. I say goodbye to my home state of Michigan, and I meet up with other biologists, and we go to the extreme southernmost tip of South Florida, um, a place called Flamingo, which is a great place to do research on this type of animal. He's cute. Oh, my Itty bitty, teeny a tiny. I say cute as a little button. Uh, what is he, guys? An alligator. Yeah, he is the world's famous American alligator. There's about 22, maybe 23 different species of alligator and crocodile on planet Earth. Each, each type is unique. And this is the one that is so very common in the southeastern region of the United States. You get them not just Florida, but Georgia, Louisiana, South Carolina, a little bit of North Carolina, Arkansas, Mississippi, parts of Texas, but warm and wet environments. Now this one, he is a baby. He's only uh, about a year and a half old. Now I met him right after he hatched out of his egg. When I, when I first met uh, baby Wally, he was seven inches long. He was actually a little small, for, for, uh, smaller than average. Seven inches. We measured him the other day, and now he, he's caught up. He's, he's right up to speed. He's about 24 inches long. And if I were to come back and bring him as a grown gator, so we all mark our calendars. We come back here 55, maybe 60 years from now. We have a little look at him then. You see where I'm, I'm going to move a little forwards here. You see the girl straight ahead with the zebra pants there. What's your name? Jordan. What is it? Jordan. What, it? Jordan. Jordan. Got it. I heard it. Don't have to tell me three times. <laughs> Someday this one will stretch from Mr. Neal all the way to Jordan. Uh, eventually it's so wide I won't get it through the door. And it, it's a male, it's a boy, and it might end up weighing close to 1,000 pounds, half a ton. Right now he is around 2 pounds. 
So in every measurable way, small, but every day getting bigger until eventually gigantic, large for a reptile. Now, I'm going to come around with him, and I'm going to let you hold him. And if you would like to hold him here, so I'll hold him with you. I will hold him my front legs and tail like so. And what you do is two hands together, and you support his little tummy. Once you're done holding his, his little tummy, you can pat his back and his sides. He's got the little duckling feet going on. He's got the Godzilla-style tail going on. <laughs> <laughs> that out. Uh, no fingers in his face, and he's not going to bite you. Alligators raised by people are very easy going. Real mellow, but his eyes are big and bright. He's got really good vision. Fingers in his face would bother him, I'm sure, like with the chinchilla. So I say, pet him anywhere you want, but behind my finger or my thumb. That is the way to go. And I'm going to begin over here on this side. What's your name? Again, do you want to be the first kid? We'll do it again. We need you together. I help you. help you. So there you go. Perfect. Got a. Again, he flops down on the floor, comes in, and the next thing you know, she's holding an alligator. Kind of back, too. You know, I really, I'm a herpetologist, guys, which is a biologist for reptiles. I didn't get a chance to do this until I was in college studying vertebrate biology and reptiles. You guys are getting a nice little head start. Looks like you're smiling at me. <laughs> you know, they've got the most cute little, almost bird like things with their long snout, beak like, and then the upward uh, curved mouth looks very much like a smile. You see his teeth hanging out? Unlike birds, birds do no, uh, birds no longer have teeth. This guy's got 80 teeth hanging out of his mouth. 40 on the upper jaw, 40 on the lower jaw. That sweet thing. Perfect. You got him. <laughs> I'm just going to let you. Uh, I, 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 was, I had one inside. Of but you can see those teeth. You know, there are four sides to his mouth. Two upper sides, two lower sides. Each side has, has 20 teeth. So, you know, four sides times 20, that'll get you your 80. Now, every once in a while, a tooth or two will drop out. And he might only have 78 teeth or something. But when he's got his full set of teeth, you know, they're, they're going to be 80. A little dry coming at you. They look like the teeth on a T Rex. Oh, you know what he had for dinner last night? Late night dinner. Uh, he ate two mice. Uh, we were walking, we were shutting the place down, turning the lights out, walking down the hallway, getting ready to leave. We passed by the gator pool, and this guy and another alligator, nearly identical in size, they're looking up at us with those big eyes, and they obviously wanted something to munch on. So we uh, thawed out, we got a freezer full of frozen rodents that we used to feed, and we thawed each of them out, two small mice, and, and down the hatch. 